Somehow I woke up out in Beverly Fucked up, smelling like that bourbon And I had a balloon I'm not sure Yeah, the girls seem polite in the club every night That's how it goes when you Hollywood person Wagwan people, Lumini here back again with another episode of the Southern Save here on my channel. We're starting things off in the team sheets here as I've got two different ideas that we may look to in the future because at the moment we are definitely struggling defensively. Um, we've got a 4-3-3 with two CDMs here. Obviously people might not be in the right position but that is what it is. I think this might just give us that a little bit more cover for the defence at the moment. There's also the idea of swapping Sangari and Oxford, which is something we're probably going to attempt to do in this game. But this will give us two CDMs to sit in, kind of cover the defence a bit more, and then have Gelhart as the main link between the striker and the out wide guys. We also have the idea of a potential for triple two. Again, it kind of effectively works the same way with the CDMs to sit in front of the defense and then the out wide guys but you'd have two better passers to hit two strikers we are going to keep things how they are for now uh, like i said though there is a couple ideas that you guys have floated around that maybe putting sangari at center back uh, and moving someone into the cdm role we may try this out in the next game because i think it's probably the game that we can kind of we can't really afford to change anything for games right now but at the three games that we have is the one that i would feel the most comfortable in actually we're playing wolves city and bother glimpt in this game uh this game this episode i think bother glimpt we definitely need to try and play our best team so it's better to experiment before then wolves and city we can kind of move things around a little bit so We'll probably do that. We do have a press conference start this one off though. So let's get that done and then get into the first game against Wolves. Hi guys, welcome to the press conference. Uh, we're ready for questions whenever you're ready to ask. You currently find yourself sat inside the top 10. Do you think your team has the ability to keep this up for the rest of the season? I talked about it at the beginning of the season. Ideally, we want to be fighting for some European competition next season. Uh, qualification through the league is our ideal spot. Um, obviously, we're competing in the Conference League as well, which give us another chance. But we want to guarantee our spot through the league. So fighting in the top 10 early season is what we're content with. I would have liked to be a little bit higher up at this point. But there's a couple of things that we'll work on. Um, and hopefully, we'll be able to push on and start grabbing ourselves some points again and push our way up the table. Early signs are that Benjamin Sesco may be the signing of the season for you guys. Can you talk to us a little bit about his impact on the team? We do a lot of extensive work on the targets that we want to bring in. Um, Sesco was no different. We always felt he had the profile to fit in um, with this team and work, a, work out a partnership up top with Ross. We're happy with how things are going so far. Obviously, sesco has been incredible, scoring a lot of goals for us, um, really dragging us out of some tough positions in the past couple of months. And yeah, we're happy with him. I know there's still more to come from him, so we'll look forward to seeing what he can do for the rest of the season. Though you're currently riding high in the table, you have also faced some defensive struggles. Can you talk to us a little bit about what's going on with that? Yeah, with the whole system change that we had with the addition of new defensive attri um not attributes sorry defensive players coming into the back line there was always going to be a little bit of time of readjustment to find out those partnerships find out how things work and i think that's currently the period that we're going through we're now starting i think to see a little bit more solidity we've got a couple of things that we can still change around see if we can get a little bit more but yeah it's just something that you gotta work on throughout the season and we've got a couple plans in mind so we'll look forward to seeing how those shape out in the coming months thanks guys 
So our lineup, pretty much the same. A couple changes. Etienne Green in goal. Aaron Tangare, Santos, and Gunter at the back. Branho dropping into that CDM role. Dahoud and Booker playing in the midfield together. And the front three are exactly the same as they have been for the last couple. Rethought could drop in down to the bench. The Wolves line up, Rubio in goal, Semedo, Longwick, Sanderson, the Knight Nori, Lindstrom, Hodge, De La Cruz, Garcia, Kalajic and Huang He Chan, the front three. Some decent options off the bench for them as well. Kalajic, a very tall player, so that's something we're going to have to try and combat. I'd really like some better performances. It's been very frustrating the last couple of games to play this and I'm hoping to kind of refine the enjoyment at some point I mean that's a very good way to start things from Wolves kickoff we managed to counter quickly find Gelhart in space he squares it across and Benjamin Sesco is there to prod home obviously we've had a spree of absolutely dominating first halves and then being pegged back in the second half if we can stop that it's actually very close to Longbridge there long bridge long I can't remember how to say his name the faceless man uh, to clearing the ball there I think he probably would have put it in the back of his own net and had he done get that us moving again. Love to play on the counter attack and the on the foul there attack from Garcia it looked like again. to Hood. Aaron's going to pick this one out. I'm pretty sure Ross Shirt is offside. It's a very good header to finish it. But it is unfortunately offside for Ross Stewart this time. Fans still don't know, it seems. I was hoping that would go to Sesco. However, saying that, both Sesco and Ross Stewart were offside as the Wolves line pushed up. Kalajic does not do anything with it. Gunter's going to pick it up here. That should be half time if we clear this one up the field, and it is. Well, that's going to be all for the first Again, the defensive performance in the first half, half not bad. The Decent half from Josh Brown, who in that CDM role as well. Benjamin Sesco giving us a very narrow lead. Joe Gelhart should have made it too, but put it wide past the post. Can we keep up this defensive performance for 90 minutes, though? That so is the here, ultimate question. The Josh well, Brownhill nicely. may be convincing me to full-time switch to this. The Dahoud's going to hit one. Well, oh, it's actually a very good hit it. from Mahmoud Dahoud there. Good bit of defending from Santa. Are you kidding me? Now, what can they do he didn't even touch him. Oh, oh what a shit goal. Keeper. What a shit goal to concede, man. A free kick that shouldn't be a free kick, and then the keeper saves it off the post, well, it comes back off him and goes into the back goal. of the net. It's a bit unfortunate, really. We just cannot get any luck right now, can we? We just can't get any luck. You know them ones? You just can go out like David Cruz. Of course, you can play it right around the corner oh, easily. Who well, is David Cruz, the by the way? I need to look this guy up. I'm not even Fantastic sure who he is. Now, how about the short right, corner? He is creating all kinds of havoc for me. And he takes Remember it away. Who gets this one though? And it's broken away from David Cruz. Burtson is up against it's Amado. Obviously, it's a pass. pace on pace matchup, so I don't know how it's going to go. Burtson oh, forced a bit wide, but will finish it. Amado couldn't get anywhere near your Burtson. It's 2 1 late on. Don't have a lot of faith that we'll hold on to it, but it's 2-1 late on. Good breakaway from well, their corner again. against this us. Semedo just cannot there, get anywhere like near. That's, a, That's a good finish from your Burtz, and we've seen him finish those a couple times now. First goal in the league, but he's been doing it in the Conference League. He's great at finishing from those Andrews. tough angles. And the margin just one. Yes. Booker wins it into Loftus Cheek. Semedo, uh, not Semedo, Sesco's got the chance to break away from well Sanderson here. here. And find Vertsen to finish off the game in the 86th minute. 3-1. I can't see Wolves getting back in it now. Could be famous last words for me because they probably will now. 
but it is 3-1 your Vertsen off the bench that's a very good nick there I can't remember who nicked the first one but we nick the ball away find the ball to Sesco he manages to get away from Sanderson lays it across perfectly your Vertsen off the bench two goals two huge goals for us as well Ahmad Diallo has nicked it again Sesco now to make it for the game is done the subs have come in huge for the boys Ahmad Diallo nicks it Sesco breaks through once again Dion Sanderson has not got any hope of matching up with Sesco right now and he makes it 4-1 in the 89th minute Take a fat tactical well, foul there. From the referee this time. And I think Brown the Hill got the doesn't win right. against Kalajic this time, but does win and against Nunez. And it's a huge, huge win for the Sunderland boys. 4-1. Finally, we show up. Finally, we get a result. Huge, huge result. Benjamin Sesko with a massive massive performance there couple massive substitute performances as well to be fair that we can't forget about Ahmad Diallo nicking the ball a couple times there for us but it is the it takes us a long time at the last 10 minutes can we go back to see who stole the ball maybe Mamou Dahoud this one was the steal from Ahmad I think the second one no was this the steal from Sesco did he steal it or did he no we can't see but a couple huge performances there man of the match it has to go to Benjamin Sesco for his work rate in that last couple of minutes also with two goals and assist absolutely huge performance well done Benjamin Sesco on your inform 4-1 win against Wolves come on Big win for us there. Sees us back up into seventh place after a little bit of a drop off. I mean, I think I've been kind of convinced there to put Josh Brownhill in the City game in that CDM role. But we have got a huge test coming up in the next one as we go up against City. So let's see if we can kind of do the same thing in that game. Probably not 4 1, but. I'll take even a draw in that game. So just out of completely nowhere, I've never had this happen before. I'm assuming this is a training injury. Philip Billing has broken his tibia. Um, I've never had this just randomly pop up before. But yeah, he's now going to be out for six months. So he's not going to be of much use to us for rotation anymore because... Oh no, was he away? Oh, okay, he was away on international duty. I've no I was about to say I've never had a training injury like that before. Right, here we are, City game. We go into it in ninth, they come into it in sixth because the teams below us have just played. Very surprised to see Burnley up competing um around in the top ten at the moment. That was a pretty big turnaround from last season where they were struggling towards the bottom. Villa overperforming as well. Um it's gonna be an interesting season I think as you can see all the big teams this season none of them really underperforming Newcastle surprisingly are very much underperforming as well as Brighton are struggling down at the bottom um, but yeah it's very interesting because you can see from what third down to us at the moment it's only like six points I think something like that so it's pretty competitive in this top 10 at the moment. But yeah, anyway, we'll get into this game against City. This is the lineup we're going for, pretty similar to the last one that we used, but uh, McCallum is coming in. Edison's still in net for them. Kuto, Laporte, Diaz, Cancelo, the back four. Herrera, Rodri, De Bruyne, Alvarez, Haaland, and Foden, the front three. Terrifying front three. Araujo, Akanji, Tom Lamar. Jack Grealish on the bench, the the lap as well. Obviously, we know what our lineup. We will see what we can get done with our new positions. Whether we can show similar solidity to the last one. 
Last game out. That is a terrible tackle. Is that going to be a straight red? Herrera has immediately got himself sent off in this game for going through the back of Pavel Booker. That is a terrible challenge from Yangel Herrera. I don't know what he's thinking, but we have a good chance here against 10 Man City. Obviously, last time we played the team who suffered a red card, they just got better and better. But Gelhart goes around the corner oh, here, does the get the he shot away, is offside. But again, Gelhart from a pretty good up. area. Well, the here, I'm not 100% sure that's effort. offside, you know. Aaron's. So let's go back to Aaron's. Got space here. There's going to be no one in the box, though. Well, oh, it's a good header from Gelhart, actually. Touch forced out a well, save from a Edison. Can we get anything from the corner? Sangare rising up. It's going to fall to him again. No way did Edison get up to save that again. No way. Alvarez up against the hood. The hood's falling over. Does deflect the back to Alvarez at least. Foden's on the strike one. Fuck's sake, man. It's so fucking annoying. I hate things like that, man. How is De Hood falling over there? Stop running to your fucking manager. How is De Hood falling over there? How is it deflecting back? And then why is nobody going across to Foden? That's so undeserved from City. And now they're probably just going to... They're just injuring all of my players as well, by the way. Like, that is absolutely ridiculous. We've got two fucking injuries as well. A booking? Yeah, he was just, did you just see that? Foden teleported! Hello! EA! What is the city tax? Oh, we're going to concede again. Do you know what? I'm skipping to result because I'm going to get too triggered for the last game. Can we just appreciate before we do it? teleported in front of Santos for the ball to fall back to them. I know I shouldn't do this, but I just can't I just cannot be bothered. They've got 10 men and they're completely outplaying us somehow, even though we're literally playing better than them. But shit just keeps falling to them. They somehow win 3-0 with 10 men. I'm not, I'm just not into playing City right now. Probably next season I might just start simming City games because they're just not worth it. Benjamin Sesko, of course, has got a broken toe, so he'll be out for three months. Josh Brown has only a shoulder. Let's get into the next game against Bother Glimp after this train. Okay, here we go, a match against Bother Glimp. We're not going to do this press conference on camera because obviously we've already done a press conference. Unfortunately, we're going to have to drop Sesco out of the lineup now, obviously, because he's injured. I mean, I'm going to bring Tillman up to the bench for that instead. Um, and Brownhill isn't going to be available to play in this one because he's still injured, which means we'll probably. I might put Justin Lerma in there. But what we'll, we'll have to do for now is switch back to this. Uh, obviously, Brownhill will probably be available in the next game. But. For this one just for convenience just gonna swap that over like i said i'm not i'm gonna do this but i'm gonna do it off camera and then we'll get into the bother glimp game so a couple changes are gonna be made in this one we are gonna give tillman the start in this one uh, i don't think i'm actually gonna play gelhart at all i'm gonna bring clark up to the bench i'm gonna give loftus cheek a game do i give lerma a game i think Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Santos and McCallum at centre back together. Put Garcia out left, keep Aaron's in. And Gary's going to go in that CDM spot for me. Heap of bodies just on the floor there. Don't have any options for Santos Sam to pass McCallum. through right now because everyone was still recovering from getting off the floor. Good ball inside the Loftus, Loftus cheek. cheek, finds Tillman through. And Tillman will give us a very early lead in this one. Good goal for Tillman, mate. I think that might be his first goal for the club as well. Man, we bought in on a free. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to play. Well, but it's taken a good opportunity here. Good ball into Loftus Cheek. I think good emphatic. little pass around the corner from Loftus Cheek as well. No Tillman finished it very finish. well into the bottom corner. With how we defend, we need to be careful of everyone. That has got to be offside, sure. 
Offside, it is offside. Well, it close I thought it. there was a chance there <laughs> that we were just immediately going to concede. That ball across was absolutely mental, actually. But, yeah, he's very clearly... Both of the attackers are stood behind our defensive line, so we do get away with it there. Cheek, that's not the ball I wanted, but Burton will head it on. Can he get onto the, his own knock forward be. as well? He can and strike one. That's a good to. save by the keeper. Didn't actually expect him to get onto the end of that. It's a very good near post cross, but no one from our team was ready for it. I don't know what just happened there as well. I don't know even more what just happened there. Mavuka now has got a chance to come forward up against McCallum. McCallum does well enough to force him back, and Santos will intercept. How have we just let him go through there? How the fuck are we doing that, man? How is nobody following the run? It is brain dead defending from us every time. Santos, move across to where the ball's going, man. Look around you, please. Once again, we concede an easy fucking goal. I'm so sick and tired of conceding easy goals, man. Santos just has to move across into that space there. There's no other no other thing to do for him there you just have to move across Tillman took 15 days to take the shot oh my god boys in the box can you get your heads out of your asses and make a bit of a defensive effort please attacking wise they're all for it but as soon as it comes to defend this almost like they don't believe in it Ross Stewart going through. Finally, Ross Stewart scores a goal again. Taking him a long time. Man, I can't even fully celebrate because I'm so fucking annoyed. <laughs> with the fact that we're just well, not blowing them out of the water. Great strength and a composed finish under pressure. Good finish at least from Ross Stewart. Get a slim lead back, but if I'm honest with how we started this game, I'm not 100% confident that we're going to hold on to it. We're going to concede, aren't we? It's a good save. Just listen to the crowd. They know it's more of a struggle than it should be, honestly. So the see it does clear it. That should be oh, half time at least. And there goes the half Not a great performance well, from us, right if I'm honest. We've got a slim so lead, which we have to be happy with. But man, it's a struggle. Obviously, Bodo Glimt aren't a bad side. Hearts are currently losing as well. Bodo Glimt aren't a bad side, but man, are we making them look better than they are. Well this is the one. That's going to deflect back. Of course it is. Perfectly deflect across. Of course it would. There's no reason it wouldn't, right? Absolutely no reason that shouldn't perfectly deflect across to them to score a goal. Sam McCallum running past the ball. Like, uh, it's so tiresome right now, man. Honestly, it's so tiresome. Bad passes as well. Just adding to my frustrations. I've taken Gar um, Garcia off because I don't know, man. I just don't have confidence in that man's McCallum. passing right now. Must take the lead here. And foiled <laughs> only by the crossbar. No. Can he finish? <laughs> oh, he's done it. But hang oh, on. shit. Offside like, he knocked everything the off my desk here. there. They're it's offside. I, d I don't know how to clear the ball at the moment, man. I just can't do it. The ball just keeps coming back into the box. I don't know. Well, I'm tell telling my players to clear it. They're just not. Here. They're not but even getting close. Oh, fuck off, Haken, man. Well, that should have been the winner there. Gunter, go wide. Absolutely terrible what I'm Problem saying right now. now. Well, the referee has instructed the fourth official to put two minutes on the board. Can Ross Stewart get away from his man here? He can. Ross Stewart finally shows up after all these games with a big moment. And that should send us through to the knockout round. An absolute ball lake. A game that should not have been anywhere remotely that difficult. Ross Stewart shows his old form from last season. Muscles his way through on goal. Finishes into the side netting. 
My god, man. My head is exploding with wanting to punch my monitor. Ross Stewart does send us through to the knockouts round. To the knockout, knocks out round? Knockout round. If Hearts did lose, then I think we top the group as well. But bloody hell, man, did we make it difficult for ourselves. Ross Stewart, two goals, showing up big in the game. He's going to need to show up well, even bigger than that because Benjamin Sesko is threat, out. But he bloody so hell. All I can say is bloody hell because we made that probably as difficult for ourselves as we could. 62% possession and still we had less shots than the opposition, man. So we are through. As winners of the group, it took us long enough. It was difficult enough for us to actually do it. But we finally, finally get ourselves through as winners of the group. Not as convincing a performance in the group as I would have liked. <sighs> There's a lot to be done. That is going to be the end of this episode. An okay episode results-wise. The first game, I was very happy with how we played. The City game, we're not talking about. Bodo Glimt. Not particularly happy with how we played, but it is what it is. We got the win and got ourselves through, so that's all that counts. We do move on to a very, very busy December before the January transfer window, though. You can see we have a bunch of games here. The next episode will be these three top ones, all only two days apart, so that's going to be a very tough schedule. Then we have our last uh, Conference League game, which will probably rotate the team completely. Chelsea... And Southampton will follow those games. And the episode after that, before we get into the January transfer window, will be Tottenham, West Ham, and Tottenham again, actually. And then we will be into January. But that's going to be the end of this episode. Please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell to get notified when the next episode is available to you. And I hope to see you in it. Peace. Uh, I'm